Welcome back to Well That's Interesting. The if you already have sleeping issues, maybe don't listen to this one edition. Oh no. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't listen to this one. <laughs> no, you're a co-host. Oh yeah. no. I, I can't leave. <laughs> no, you're committed. You're I'm sorry, you're in it. Fine. You're I will it. stay. I will co-host the fuck out of this <laughs> even if it costs me some sleep. There you go. That's how committed I am. <laughs> Today is episode 054, the real life sleeping beauty syndrome. Oh man, if I <laughs> if I wasn't stressed before, I sure am now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jill Chacha and I am with a uh, returning champion and horrified Marissa Riley. Yes. <laughs> I'm so awesome and scared. <laughs> It's very good to be here. Yeah, so good. Uh, if this is your first time listening, welcome to the flock. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Riley here comes in cold and learns everything in real time, just like you. It's true. So. <laughs> I, I, when I say I'm basically a listener, it's true. Yeah. I am here listening, reacting, uh, just like you guys might. So. So. And I also had no idea what we were going to talk about today. Yes. And, well, I might have gotten a little clue. I might have gotten a little tiny clue. But I am very excited to learn yeah. the ins and outs okay. of this fucking syndrome. Now, I know you uh, just came back from L.A. Yes, I did. Where you uh, slept on an air mattress. I did. <laughs> I slept on an air mattress. Yeah. How'd that go? It was fine. It really wasn't that bad. Okay. I don't mind an air mattress. I don't mind an air mattress at all. Uh, I also slept in the desert. Yeah. I also hmm. slept in a Hilton garden. Um, so wow. yeah, many, you, many places. You ran the gamut. I really did. <laughs> I, I have been all over the fair <laughs> state of, of California. And by all over, I mean three places. So, <laughs> But you slept okay. Oh, I slept okay. okay. Yeah, 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 I slept okay. That might have been because of all the tequila I was drinking, ah. but mm. I, I slept okay. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. On uh, my vacation, I, uh, uh, you know, just walked around the apartment naked. Yeah. That sounds honestly <laughs> that amazing. I, I am jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I walked around the apartment naked and, um, yeah, I, I also bought a bottle of tequila, so I had... A lot of naked tequila. That's about it. Similar vibes. Yeah. We had similar vibes. Amazing. You were naked with tequila, and I was wearing yeah. sweatpants in the desert, <laughs> question mark, with tequila, and a couple sundresses. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're back. It. Me too. I'm glad you're back. Let's start this fucking nightmare. How does that sound? Sounds amazing. All right. So, Dr. Marissa, I know you just came back from L.A., yes. but pack your bags. We're heading south. To South America, Ooh. to the absolutely gorgeous country of Colombia, oh. and specifically, we are in the very teeny, absolutely tiny city of Acacias. Oh, Acacias! Yes. Now, for my geographically challenged Americans, don't you worry. Where is this exactly? Well, uh, please imagine a, 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 a map of South America. Okay. 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 Now, point to the northwest coastline. You got it. And there you have Colombia. Oh, now, that was that was the <laughs> easiest one I think you've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> it gets even easier. Just point to the middle of Colombia. What? And there you have little Acacias. That I mean, that was too easy. Too easy. It's about a four-hour drive from the capital of Bogota. Oh. Now, a few things about Acacias. Uh, it's relatively close to the equator, so it enjoys a tropical climate year-round with temperatures that hover around the mid to high 80s. Okay. And it's kind of hot. It's kind of hot. Uh, with that tropical climate also means rain and a lot of it. Ugh. I a- see. I see. <laughs> I see what's going on here. It's, it's, it's nice, but it's raining. Yeah, all mm. the time. On average, uh, 200 days out of the year includes some amount of precipitation. Oh, my God. Bringing a whopping 180 inches of rainfall a year. That's a lot of it's water. a lot of fucking rain. Yeah. Now, what it doesn't have a lot of, though, is people. Oh. It's a tiny city, like I said, with a population of around 60,000. Oh. And it just so happens one of those residents is a medical marvel. Okay. Sharik Tovar looks like every other 17-year-old girl. Okay. But back in 2019, her condition went viral, no pun intended, Uh (laughs) and and the world learned of a syndrome only heard of in fairy tales. And like most fairy tales, this shit is real dark. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Now let's get into Uh. it. So at the age of two, Sharik slept longer than most babies. Okay. 
That's, that's, I mean, let's pause right there. Yeah. That's fucking stressful. It, it's odd. Can you imagine being a new mom? Or I don't know, maybe she has sisters. I'm not, or, or just a mom. Yeah. And, and your baby is sleeping all the time. It's, a, yeah, it's unusual, I think. I'd be bummed. Yeah. Or, or maybe if this was child number five relieved. Yes. Context. Yes. And experience. We need context. Saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, as far as I know, Mother didn't really, no, no, right, no red flags. Okay. You know, it wasn't until she was older that her mother knew something wasn't quite right. On occasion, seemingly at random, Sharik would suddenly become, like, be, like, be overcome with an unusual form of hypersomnia oh. or an extraordinarily lengthy period of sleep that can, I shit you not, last for months. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I have prayed for something like this to happen to me <laughs> in a very joking matter. Yeah. There were a few times during the pandemic where I think I can speak for a lot of people when I say I would have just loved to like sleep through it. Mm. It's not even that I was having a hard time. It just got a little boring sometimes. <laughs> and I was like, you know, this would be a good time to get some rest. Yeah. And I think I did actually try to sleep through those months, but unfortunately it didn't work because I don't have this... Disease, which actually sounds horrifying. It's, it's horrifying, but I think a lot of people relate to what you just said about wanting to sleep through uh, a year and a half. Or the absolute fucking worst shit. Yeah, it was yeah. horrifying. And it was tiring. Yeah. So. But then you'd have to wake up to what we have now, which is equally horrible. Yep. So, I mean, just... Yep. Another. Oh, look, it's another shit storm. Oh, <laughs> so... my gosh. Surprise. So, didn't see it coming. Um, anyway, <laughs> back to the story. Uh, yeah, so this isn't coma or paralysis. It's just sleep. Hmm. And according to her mother, Marlini, Sharik's longest episode was back in 2018, when for 48 days straight, Sharik slept. That's a yeah. really long time. And yeah. I also can't help but wonder, yeah. how the fuck are you eating? Yeah, yeah. And like... yeah. Using the bathroom. Yeah, that's an awesome, awesome point. Yeah. Um, because people with this disease will, will get into it. You can wake them up, but like Sharik, she can only be woken to a state that's like severely out of it. Half awake, <sighs> half asleep, just long enough where Marlini like could assist Sharik to the bathroom and help her suck down like a liquefied food that her mom blended together um, because she was too sleepy to even chew. That is so scary. Yeah. That is so scary. If I, I mean, I, I was worried about the mom before and I'm really worried about her now. Can <laughs> yes. you imagine seeing your baby just once a day yeah. to, to feed them out of a straw? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my heart. I know. Stop it's... it. My heart is breaking. <laughs> it's, it's, that's my heart shattering. That was oh, that was that. That's what that was. That's what that Got was. Got it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, the the so. terrible sound effect I made with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to this horrifying yeah. thing. Yeah, I can't imagine what happens when it's like one day, five days, seventeen days, and it just keeps going. It like you never know when it's going to end. It's how do fucking you, crazy. How do you plan stuff? How yeah. do you plan holidays? Right. Family visits. There you go. What if auntie and uncle stop That's by? Right. So, sorry, she's sleeping for the next two months. Right. Come back in a few. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, what can I say? As you can imagine, being pretty much unconscious for two and a half months will make you a little disoriented when you finally wake up. And Dr. Marissa, would you be so kind as to tell us what disturbing event occurred when Charik came to from this lengthy slumber. Oh my God, yes. Okay, mom told uh, Noticias Caracol, quote, after a 48-day sleeping episode in June last year, she lost her memory temporarily. She asked me who I was. And, quote, oh my God, I, I... I'm less and less worried about the girl and more and more worried about the mom. Is she seeing someone? This sounds like trauma. No shit. If yeah. my baby, first of all, slept for two months, oh my God, forget yeah. about my sanity, yeah. but then woke up and didn't know who I am, oh, I would crumble. Yeah. I would crumble. It's got to be harder for caretakers oh. than, you know, than 
Well, yeah, because they're it. sleeping. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> so, I, I'm kidding. There's yeah. probably a ton of uh, trauma that comes with oh yeah with sleeping through half of your life. But yeah, oh my god. But yeah. I, I do feel, especially for the mom, I am yeah yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, in 2019 through January and February, Sharik had her second longest episode, sleeping for 22 days straight, Aye. with, of course, her mom feeding her by hand every couple of hours and rotating her body to avoid bed sores and muscle atrophy, uh, which happens way faster than I thought. Um, really? Yeah. I was curious about that and looked it up. <laughs> um, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Um, according to nursingtimes.net, quote, one study found that 72 hours, or three days, of limb immobilization could cause atrophy of slow and fast-twitch muscle fibers by 14 and 17 percent, respectively. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I also looked up what the fuck slow and fast-twitch muscles are. <laughs> okay, good, because I have definitely spent 72 hours straight in bed <laughs> at least six times in the last two months. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the full two months. Yeah, I think it's... But I have spent a long time in bed a few times, and yeah. I'm stressed for my fast, slow and fast <laughs> twitch mus muscle fiber situation. Yeah. Tell me what it is. Okay. It turns out they're important. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so, Great. Uh, Dr. Marissa, um, if you would continue reading from Nursing Times uh, and help explain why we don't want to lose 17%. Of these fibers. Of course, of course. <laughs> All right, quote, slow twitch muscle fibers contract slowly and produce large amounts of energy so they can keep moving for long periods of time. They are rich in blood cap capillaries, mitochondria, and myoglobin, a protein pigment similar to hemoglobin that binds to and releases oxygen during muscular contraction. Slow twitch fibers are abundant in in the muscles of the neck and back where they help maintain posture while sitting or standing. They are also abundant in many muscles in the lower leg where they support endurance activities such as long distance running mm -hmm. and cycling. End quote. So basically, if you want to mm, sit up or stand <laughs> or cycle or, or move yeah. Long distance running wise. Yeah. If you... uh, don't don't stay in bed for that long. <laughs> no. Get out of bed. Stop. Yeah. Stop. We're sitting in a bed, Jill. We are. We are. We're sitting at the edge of a bed. It's called our office. It's... Right. Sorry to pull back the curtain. <laughs> we shouldn't be sitting here anymore. Oh, we're, uh, you know, we still have three more days to go. So. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> but our slow twitch muscle fibers. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so your back, your legs, basically everywhere. Um, uh, fast twitch muscles contain fewer myoglobin because they help with rapid movement. So you'll find a lot of these fibers in your arms, for example, because, you know, arms do a lot of rapid things. Yeah. Yeah. So I use them every day. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, luckily, though, thanks to the pure fucking love and diligence Marlini has for her daughter, Sharik hasn't developed any physical disabilities. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But this syndrome, officially called Klein-Levin syndrome, has taken a huge toll on the family economically. Oh, God. I didn't even think of that aspect. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, Marlini has to... Well, I'm sorry. Marlini had to quit her job to care for Sharik full-time. And although the mayor of Acacias pledged to provide housing where they wouldn't have to pay rent, uh, that has yet to happen. What the fuck? <laughs> so Dude, Mayor of Acacias, mm. stop promising to, things to this. To children. Oh, to children. <laughs> stop it. To children who can't wake up. <laughs> and a mom who's probably so tired. It's a bad luck, man. Ah. So, uh, But thanks to the media, Sharik's condition is getting visibility, revealing to the world what Klein-Levin syndrome looks like. And uh, Dr. Marissa, I'd love to show you a few seconds from two videos. Okay. All right. Now, if you could please describe what's happening and the stark fucking differences in each. Uh, and for the folks at home, if you also want to watch these two videos, head on over to YouTube and search Noticias Caracal La Bella Dormiente. Oh. Mm. Uh, I'll also provide some screenshots on our social media stuff. So please come on by and fucking play along.
Um, all right, let me pull this up for you, Dr. Marissa. Uh, just please describe what you see. I've got it on mute, but give I, us a beautiful narrative. I will tell the most gorgeous narrative. <laughs> Here you go. Okay, I see a, I see a little girl in bed, yeah. in her little girl bed with her bright sheets. She is asleep. She is cuddled up to the eyeballs. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is her room, and it's, it's oh, it's a classic you know, child's room. And I see her mom now is kind of, um, helping lift her and move her a little bit. Right. She was on her side and it looked like the mom was sort of yeah. switching her around. Let me fast forward a little bit. Here she is moving around a little more, but yeah. It's, so it looks like what she does is she kind of uses a cushion. So after she shifted her, yeah. she'll kind of put a cushion underneath her legs. It looks like to maybe Help some blood flow. There I you don't go. Know. There you go. And uh, now it looks like she's making a smoothie. I'm not sure what's in it. It's a light pink color, so maybe strawberry. <laughs> and um, yeah, there you go. That, yeah, she was uh, making some uh, some quote some, unquote food. Some food. There you go. Yeah, some drinkable food. There you go. Okay, now the second video. Okay, completely okay. different. Okay, what do you see? All right, I see a young woman. She is wide awake. She's got her little teddy bear. She's speaking to a reporter. She's completely normal looking. Yeah. And um, I, I don't see anything strange about her. She's smiling. She's laughing. She's yeah. pointing to stuff. Looks like she's with her family, a brother and her mom. That She looks totally fine. Yeah. There is nothing odd about her. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and and I... I this just sucks. I'm just imagining like having to like miss school and miss yeah. your friends and like mm -hmm. not really knowing what happened and like just blips of time just completely disappearing. Exactly. That's so scary. Yeah. Oddly enough, that is the same girl in both videos. That is Sharik. So like we said, it's fucking bizarre. And after the break, we're going to dive a little deeper into the syndrome, like who it affects, what it affects and how the hell... This could even fucking happen. Oh. So please, stay tuned. Stay tuned. When Johann Rahl received the letter on Christmas Day, 1776, he put it away to read later. Maybe he thought it was a season's greeting and wanted to save it for the fireside. But what it actually was, was a warning, delivered to the Hessian colonel, letting him know that General George Washington was crossing the Delaware and would soon attack his forces. The next day, when Rawl lost the Battle of Trenton and died from two Colonial Boxing Day musket balls, the letter was found, unopened in his vest pocket. As someone with 15,000 unread emails in his inbox, I feel like there's a lesson there. Oh well, this is The Constant, a history of getting things wrong. I'm Mark Chrysler. Every episode, we look at the bad ideas, mistakes, and accidents that misshaped our world. Find us at constantpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello everyone, it's Takuyi here. And I'm Gabby. And we are the hosts of History of Everything, a podcast which you can probably guess by the name is, well, I mean, it's about everything. Do you want to know why people thought potatoes were evil and would give you syphilis? Are you curious about all the stories of the terrible and stupid ways that people have kicked the bucket over the years? Do you want to hear tales about all of the different badasses of history and the lives that they had brought to life? Well, if so, then look no further. History of Everything is just the right podcast for you. It's available on Spotify, Pandora, and anywhere else that you get your podcast from. Join us for some fun and just see how weird and wacky history can be. Hey everyone, Jill Chacha here from Well That's Interesting, and I am absolutely thrilled to tell you about Spotify for Podcasters. I use it, I love it, and it all started by downloading the free Spotify for Podcasters app, which has all the tools you need in one place to record and edit your masterpiece of a podcast. Spotify for Podcasters also distributes your show to all major platforms. So when you hit publish, your episodes will stream not only on Spotify, but I'm talking about the Apples, the Googles, Stitcher, Good Pods, the other ones. <laughs> you get the idea. And you can monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership required. You could also set up monthly subscriptions and record ads just like this one. So what are you waiting for? 
Download Spotify for podcasters today and start changing the world. Oh, and please, stay interesting. And we're back. We are so back. We're so back. And we're knee deep in a systematic review of all published cases of <laughs> Klein-Levin syndrome since 19-fucking-62. Fuck yeah, we are. <laughs> we are knee deep in that shit. <laughs> we are going to talk about it. <laughs> uh, well, we're not. But oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> the good people over at uh, the Stanford University Center for Narcolepsy in Palo Alto, California, uh, the Klein-Levin Syndrome Foundation in Boston, Massachusetts, and Hapital ooh, um, Petit Salpetriere in Paris, France. Nailed it. Yeah, I did. Nailed I it. Said it better than anyone. Um, Fuck yeah. <laughs> they did all the work for us because let me tell you, I'm glad they did because it's not an easy task hunting down information on this here syndrome, abbreviated KLS. Yeah, to be honest, I've never heard of this and I feel like I should have by now. <laughs> it's, right? Yeah. It's fucking frightening. Crazy. Um, my friends, since 1962, there's only been 168 known cases and in all of recorded medical history, there's only been about 500. That's... That's nothing. It's nothing. That is nothing. It's, it's it, meh. It's nothing. It's meh. It's, n- it's nothing. But still, I am <laughs> completely convinced. Yeah. I am going to get it. Uh, I'm yeah. going to get it tonight. <laughs> it's going to happen. I'm going to be asleep for two months. You're going to have to feed me shit Aww. in a straw. I hope you're okay with that. Yeah. Turn me over. Mm-hmm. Aw. I, I, I would. And I, I want to know what. What's your menu? What's your menu for like? What should I blend up for, for you? For smoothies yeah. or anything? I mean, what should I make? I feel like you should try it. Okay, I feel like Just say tacos. I tacos are great. <laughs> tacos are fine, but I feel like they wouldn't blend properly. You know what uh, I think would blend well? Yeah, spaghetti. Oh, that's good. Spaghetti and sauce. Oh, that's that's brilliant. And a little bit of uh, meatballs. I could do that. That's not a problem. Okay. I feel like that That's would adorable. taste good. We could have like a cute, like little, um, what was the lady in the tramp moment? Yeah, except <laughs> I'm, right. except I'm passed out and That's drooling. Right. That's right. <laughs> and I'll, I'll have my you, plate. And, uh, yeah, I'll. <laughs> can you take a, a selfie of like me sleeping and you like, I don't know, dressed up? <laughs> this got really dark. It did. This got rough. Really- <laughs> I feel Reeling like, it in, okay. <laughs> Maybe we should move on. Backpedal, uh, yes. Let's, move, let's go back to the podcast. Jesus Christ. Okay, this is a super rare, super weird, and super mysterious disease. Um, let's start with a few things that did stand out in those records. Okay, the overwhelming majority of people with KLS were male, oh. about 68% of them, and their median age was 15 to 16 years old. Okay, yeah. I have a thought on this. Yeah. I don't think yeah. young men, young teenage boys sleeping would be that big of a deal. Right. I yeah. feel like it might help hmm. society. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> Have you met a teenage boy? They're stressful. They're stressful. They are. Yeah. Maybe they do need some more sleep. I hope the, the best for everyone on this planet. But teenage boys, <laughs> if they wanted to get a little more sleep, I'd be fine with might, that as well. I'd be... The best for all of us. <laughs> Might be the best. <laughs> but um, I know we just spoke about Sharik and what she's been going through. She's yeah. a teen girl. And there are cases uh, where folks are in their 40s, 50s, and even 80s that have this wow. disease. Wow. Yeah. But uh, through all of those records, on average, it looks like KLS hits uh, in, like, adolescent males. But Okay. What about 31-year-old women? Yeah. <laughs> Asking for myself. <laughs> uh, we, we'll, we'll get into it. Usually the signs, oh. usually it shows up. There are signs? Uh, kind of. Tell me more. Okay, Tell me so, everything. Uh, so for how often these extended periods of sleep strike, it's a total fucking crap shoot. Yeah. Shoot. Um, those diagnosed could have episodes two to 12 times a year, or they can go for a period of weeks, months, or even years without experiencing anything at all. And to top it off, there's no real warning beforehand when episodes are about to occur. That's so stressful. I yeah. can't imagine living my life and making plans. Yeah. Getting a job. Yeah. Getting a partner. Yeah. 
dating in the first place? <laughs> That's right. Oh my God, do you think someone with this has ghosted someone on accident? Oh, yes. Oh, I know. Oh my God, can you imagine waking up from a, a, a spell, two months, you, you open your phone, all these angry texts from someone you went on a date with, and yep. then you text them the most unbelievable thing in the world, which is, I have a diagnosed sleeping disorder and I've been passed out for two months. Can you imagine being on the receiving end of that? I think it's only acceptable if you did that to an employer. <laughs> so, I feel like you'd need hard, hard evidence because if I got a text like that, I'd be like, fuck you. Yeah. Send. Yeah. It, yeah. It's hard, especially when there's only so been 500, 500 in all medical, medical history. <sighs> Bless their heart. Yeah. Uh, It's bonkers living like this, and the KLS Foundation, klsfoundation.org, addressed it on their site. Um, Now, Dr. Marissa, if you would please be so kind and read for us what life is like between episodes and living with the unknown. Absolutely. All right. Quote, between episodes, those diagnosed with uh, KLS appear to be in perfect health with no evidence of behavioral or physical dysfunction. However... They function daily with the frightful reality that they could become sick again at any moment. KLS episodes may continue to reoccur for a decade or longer with devastating effects on the adolescent's life and family. KLS robs children and young adults of big pieces of their lives, one agonizing episode at a time. And quote, God, it's so heartbreaking. Yeah. I know I keep making jokes about like dating with KLS and 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 whatnot, but this is very serious, yeah. and and my heart goes out to anyone affected by this. Yeah. So, how do these kids end up with this syndrome to begin with? Uh, good news, that's not exactly known either. Um, it's kind of like research. <laughs> Great. <laughs> It's kind of like researchers have pieces to a to a huge puzzle, puzzle but they don't know what the picture is. Hmm. Um, let's talk about a few pieces. Right before the initial onset of KLS, people show flu-like symptoms, and that's in 72% of cases. Wow. Yeah. So in 2018, this led researchers to check out the blood and cerebrospinal fluid of patients with KLS, both in and out of episodes. Okay. And those experiencing episodes had an elevated white blood cell count compared to folks not experiencing an episode. This could suggest there's some type of autoimmune situation happening where the body's own defenses may be attacking, like the hypothalamus, for example, which helps regulate sleep. Interesting. So, yeah. Now, when antibiotics were administered to a group of volunteers, some folks weren't as sleepy and out of it when they woke up, when they were like, you know, woken up by their caretakers to go to the bathroom or whatever. They were like, they oh. felt, quote unquote, a little less sleepy. Great. But there was like, nothing overall spectacular happened when antibiotics were administered. So there's no real treatment for this. Yeah, well, well, we'll get into it. Let's, okay. let's keep going. Okay. Yeah. okay. So another piece of this ridiculously sized jigsaw um, puzzle, researchers also saw an abnormality on a gene called TRANK1, okay. which is associated with, plot twist, bipolar disorder. Whoa. Yeah. Yep. Whoa. I know. Who saw that fucking coming? I didn't, but I mean, like, <laughs> this is such a stretch, but it's like a bipolar, I don't know. I don't know. It's just two, it's two very yeah. different things, awake and asleep. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm trying to stretch and connect, but you're <laughs> going to have hard. to. Yeah. Uh, when given lithium, of all things, relapses stopped in <gasps> 41% of cases. The problem, though, is lithium fucking sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dr. Marissa, would you please read just some of the side effects of lithium for us? Of course. Uh, headache, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness or drowsiness, changes in appetite, hand tremors, dry mouth, Increased thirst and urination, thinning of hair or hair loss, acne-like rash. Now, as you know, as someone who was once fifteen, yeah, 
If someone read me that list of side effects, I wouldn't have cared about a single one except for acne like rash. <laughs> if you told me as a 15 year old a drug was going to give me more acne, yeah. I'd be like, fuck no. I'd rather sleep for two months. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Pass. Yeah. Understandable. Big. But also, but also lithium just sucks in general. I'm making a joke, but it's, yeah. dude, these side effects are not, they fucking not blow. a joke. Yeah, they fucking blow. And uh, you'll have to be on it for a very long time to be certain you won't relapse. Jesus. On average, people experience KLS for eight years. Oh my God. And long-term lithium use also fucking sucks because it can cause hypothyroidism and kidney problems. So yeah, fuck that, especially if you're a still developing child. That's that's not good. Yeah, no it's thanks. Not, not a good situation. So at the moment, it looks like treatment is a Marvel comic movie where it's like requiring coordinated efforts of a team of specialists like pediatricians, psychiatrists, psychologists, neurologists, and other healthcare professionals. It's a mess. Oi, sounds expensive, like a Marvel movie. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, as for Sharik, I don't even know what her treatment is or if she's getting any. Acacias is a really teeny city in the middle of Colombia, and she may be just waiting until she grows out of it. Um, because just as KLS mysteriously appears, it mysteriously disappears with age and time. Other than the psychological effects, it's not hurting her body. Mm. She's developing normally. Yeah. If I had to, I mean, everyone's allowed to go in their own path, but if I had to choose between that and drugs, <laughs> I think I would rather sleep it out and try to move on, but I've also never had it, so I don't fully understand how debilitating it yeah. is. It's, it seems to put a lot of pressure on uh, her family. Her family. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. It's so hard. It's so fucking hard. Now, fuck, man. Um, there's no real fun way to wrap up this episode, so, <laughs> uh, so I thought we'd just do a rundown of the five most common dreams and what they mean. I love it! <laughs> I have dreams every night, not so, to brag. Uh, or what I, su- I should say, what they could mean. And this is according to sleep.ihg.com. Okay. And IHG stands for the Intercontinental Hotels Group, but you know them better as the folks... Over at Holiday Inn. That, I mean, this is the most random thing yeah. we have ever <laughs> done on the podcast. A dream list yes. from Holiday Inn. You got it. Just the finest I mean, thing. if anyone knows <laughs> dreams, it's Holiday Inn. <laughs> I was just as shocked. Um, uh, Dr. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dr. Marissa, would you like to see some of these seriously deep dream analysis from the people over at Holiday Inn. Uh, I think we can alternate the top five. What do you think? Sounds great. <laughs> okay. Why don't you take it away with uh, the first one? I would love to. Okay. All right. Number one, being chased. Uh, the feeling of getting away means you are running from something in your life that's bothering you, but you haven't faced. It may also represent some aspect of your personality that you are reluctant to tackle. Uh, falling, whether you dream of falling off a cliff, a skyscraper, or even just a slip and fall on the ground, Ouch. it could mean you're feeling some kind of let down or overwhelmed and want to assert more control. Oh. All right. Flying. It symbolizes liberation, mastery, and a reward for finally getting it right. Wow. I, haven't had, I haven't had that one. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> flying in an airplane can be more of a success-oriented dream that things are finally taking off. Yeah, definitely haven't had that one. <laughs> uh, I've had this one way too often. It's really fucking disturbing. Uh, teeth falling out. Oh, no. Yeah. Any dream involving the neck, mouth, or throat area is related to how you are communicating. Oh. Teeth dreams can be related to a conversation that you didn't handle correctly. Uh, cracking, breaking, or losing teeth can be connected to loose speech, while crumbling teeth can correspond to weak speech or the argument that you didn't, where you didn't make your point strong enough. Okay, I've never had a teeth falling out dream, but really? I should be having them every <laughs> night. I rarely make my point in arguments well. <laughs> I usually make it 
three days later in my head. Oh, yeah. I win all my conversations uh, in the shower. Yes! <laughs> yes! That's where I win my arguments. Oh, it's so good, too. It's so good. Anyways, I should be having that dream more often. Okay, the final dream is this one. I have this one too often. Being back in school. Whether you're a current student or graduated years ago, it's common to have a dream in which you can't find a locker, classroom, or are un- unprepared for an exam. Uh, these are so common because they tend to be connected to your job or career. School is your first job and not finding your locker could mean you don't feel you've found your place in life while not being ready for a test could mean you are facing a new job, workload, or even a software program and you don't feel prepared. This dream can signify you don't think you're measuring up. I've never met a slacker who has reoccurring school dreams, says Kelly Sullivan Walden, a certified hypnotist and author of the Love, Sex, and Relationship Dream (laughs) Dictionary. It's always the people who are really driven, already successful, who worry they won't be. End quote. Yeah, I, I'm i not saying I'm successful, but I do have the school dream constantly. I think it's more for the earlier reason of feeling like uh, I don't have a place in life. I feel like that's a very common thread for artists. And yeah. I also just called myself an artist. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> We're all artists. I know. I'm, I'm going to have the teeth falling out dream tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I have this one all the time, too. It's just like, I didn't have enough credits, or I didn't take the math class I was supposed to. Uh, I, I have this happens. I have this one where I miss yeah. the same class every day, and yeah. it's the end of the semester, and I'm yeah. like, I wonder if I go today, <laughs> if they'll notice. <laughs> right. Yeah. I have that. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm, well, like, traumatized just thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, well, please write in. Tell us your... Uh, do you relate to any of these top five? Yeah, are you <laughs> flying? If so, tell us, yeah. tell us, teach us the way. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, so. <laughs> must be nice. Uh, and if you want more surprisingly detailed information from a hotel chain, <laughs> uh, head on over, head on over to sleep.ihg.com. Uh, we are not sponsored by them. I just thought this would be funny. It was <laughs> so. so funny. It's random. Holiday Inn. You've been hiding it from us all these years. Right? Who knew? Who the fuck knew? Who the fuck knew? Uh, so thank you for listening, subscribing, telling your friends about the real life um, sleeping beauty syndrome and this just how deep Holiday Inn is. The well of Holiday Inn. The well of Holiday Inn. <laughs> they care about your sleep and your dreams. Um, yeah, but if you have any cool sleep stories, sleep problems that you want to talk about, oh, yeah. if you have KLS, write in. We would love to hear from you. We would love to hear what it's like to have it and yeah. to survive it. Right. Um, or, or maybe survive isn't the word. Just live with it. Yeah. So. Uh, and please, stay interesting. Please do.